Welcome back to Sunless Sea. The main thing that I want to do is look for more ports, specifically Magdalens, which I've had in my quest list to deliver seeds to since the beginning of the freaking game. So it's probably not that far away from New Winchester, I'm betting. Anyway, I'm going to go look for that, but I want to do a couple other small things first. First, let's head to the circus and drop off the twin acrobat that we just got from the Lustrum Mines. At the circus now, let's reunite the acrobatic twins. You've brought the errant one back to the circus. I wondered when we'd see each other again, one twin remarks to the other. The other replies, how did you know I'd return? You always have before. I'm glad you're alright. They wander off, each catching the other up as to what has passed in their time apart. 50 sovereigns, 500 experience, and 2 sky stories. Let's go speak with them now. They sit across from each other in quiet conversation, sunk deep into their fat cushions. They smile awkwardly at you. It is good for us to be together again. And not so good. I do rather wish we could be free of this place. Perhaps you'll have better success. Perhaps. They fall into a silence you cannot pull them out of. Okay, I think that's every bit that I could help them, right? I got the geese costumes, the geese clown costumes for the Pensive Clown. Uh, Reunited the twins. I repaired the magic stuff for the magician. magician. Um, I distributed the flyers for the strong woman. Let's go speak with the main person who runs all this stuff. Where is that? The big top? Or maybe we go back? Not quite sure. Oh, hey, look at this. A moment's memory. Pulmer and Plenty's inconceivable circus is pulling in crowds. Yeah, so now that we've gotten them so fixed up and improved, they're starting to actually pull in crowds and it's not so deserted. That's what I was hoping would happen. Um, before I do that, let's real quick do this new arrivals at the circus just to lower our terror. It's at 64% at the moment. Listen to their stories. Now it's at 54%. Done that a bunch of times, so I'm not going to read the description. Just a quick check again if I can go talk with the main person, the ringmaster. Doesn't look like it. I could go into the big top, even though there's no performance. Would the ringmaster be in there? The echoing silence of the empty tent is undercut by something just out of earshot. A buzzing, almost. You travel to the giant obelisk to one side of the port. The noise, the sensation, only gets louder. The obelisk is covered with giant indecipherable symbols, and as you touch it, you being here feels right on some deep primal level. All thoughts of travel melt away. There's a place for you here, where you're meant to be amongst the grease paint and the sawdust. You quickly pull your hand away. The itch recedes. I feel like I maybe read this a long time ago, but I barely remember it, so I'm glad I read it again. Okay, let's do a moment's memory. They're pulling in crowds. Passenger locomotives shuttle guests in. Merchant traders, and even the odd high-ranking tackety captain, find excuses to dock at Gervais's rest. The ringmaster is run off his feet. The rejuvenated circus is heaving with visitors. Looming over it all is the vast obelisk. Its shadow falls over the crowds. Its sigils are burning brighter than you remember. Uh, let's approach the obelisk. I've had an uncomfortable feeling about this. I don't think I've had any good things come out of anything that has these types of symbols. I mean, I associate these types of symbols with horrors on the map. The sigils smolder invitingly. You could touch it if you like. The circus has vanished. The islands on which it stood are empty. Empty aside from a vast tree of fungus stretching up into the heavens. Its high face stretch from island to island, weaving them together, a verdant. Looming above it is a luminous crustacean the size of a palace, a messenger. Its carapace is emblazoned with the sign of two overlapping suns. Its pincers flex slowly, thoughtfully. 
sigils burn in the air between the two, exchanged like volleys in a tennis match. Gradually, the flurry of correspondence diminishes. A compact has been reached. The messenger drives the obelisk into the ground, a marker of their concord. The obelisk is marked with the words of the emissaries, of meeting, of peace. One close to the point ignites in searing light, a commingling of radiances. The obelisk remembers the promise. Something has to. Whoa. Gained a searing enigma. You've brought the circus back to full strength and experienced something of what came before. Okay, this is important. So I just read this again, trying to examine it a little bit. There's two main characters that they're talking about. The two large godlike figures that are speaking to each other. There's the Verdant. And then looming above it, the luminous crustacean the size of a palace is a messenger. So a Verdant and a messenger are speaking. Uh, a vast tree of fungus is how they describe the Verdant. Vast tree of fungus, high face, stretch from island to island. And then for the messenger, it talks about a carapace emblazoned with the sign of two overlapping suns. And then the talk using the sigils, and then when they agree on something, the messenger, the carapace one, drives the obelisk into the ground as a mark of their agreement, a commingling of radiances. So the carapace has the sign of two overlapping suns. So it is a, is it an agent of a sun, the suns, something? I mean, it's literally called a messenger. So maybe it's a messenger for a sun. Since suns are, I'm just going to say they're gods. They certainly feel like them. Yeah, probably a messenger for a god. It's just, it has a sign of two overlapping suns, which to me sounds like it's, like, why would that be from one sun if it's a, a, a sign of two overlapping suns? Maybe it's just a messenger from, like, the Empire of Light? Maybe there's some, like, common faction between all the different suns because they are the creators of light? I don't know. Or maybe they're overlapping because being a messenger, it's trying to say that, hey, our two suns can both shine together, right? Like a... A picture of friendship. A commingling of radiances, you could say. That is very interesting. So, yeah, has anything else changed? I mean, that is cool enough, but... Anything else? What about if I speak with the performers? Are they any different? Nope, that's not any different. What if I actually just view a performance? Yeah, let's attend another performance. I've got a million free tickets. The big top is filled. The audience chatters in anticipation. When the lights dim and the ringmaster is drawn into the center ring on his horse-drawn calliope, singing of the night's delights, the applause is rapturous. Then come the acts. The magician appears suddenly from a puff of smoke, dazzling the crowd with his many amazing devices. The acrobatic twins swing from their trapeze, figures of perfect symmetry as they go back and forth. The pensive clown is heralded by his comedic geese, cuddles, and ruffles, who march in their finery before him. <laughs> they honk as he juggles them, and the audience collapses into laughter. The strong woman asks the crowd if they've brought anything for her to lift. They cheer as a group of ten attendees struggle to wheel out a wagon full of crates and barrels. Not only does she lift them all in turn, she overturns the wagon single-handedly at the end to rapturous applause. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy for them. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff. Four sky stories and a vision of the heavens. The circus staff have hinted that the ringmaster might care for a word. Oh, cool. Uh, let's also visit the amusements. The standards have improved since you first visited. You and your crew spend several hours enjoying the offerings of the newly revitalized circus. The strong woman salutes you, effortlessly supporting a heavy bar with the other hand. The urchin at the drinks stand gives you a drink with probably no spit in it at all. 
<laughs> by the time your ticket expires, your crew is considerably more relaxed. 44%, thank god I needed that. What if I do that again? Is that just gonna keep doing that? Can I seriously just keep doing that until my terror is just totally reduced? 34... 24? This feels almost like cheating. It's too easy. Huh. I'm gonna stop doing that. That feels cheap. I feel like you should only be able to do that once every visit to this place. Wait, how do I speak to the ringmaster? Do we have to go into the big top again? Nope. I don't understand. Yeah, there really doesn't seem to be a way to talk to the ringmaster. I'm not sure why it said that they wanted to speak with me. Anyway, let's buy up a bargain that they have here. Some carefully packed munitions. And I'm going to head on over to Port Avon to reduce my terror a little bit more. I know I could just farm it here to get it to zero, but again, that feels cheap, so I want to do it at Port Avon. And I think Mr. Menagerie is also over here, and I'm wondering if I have enough stuff to to get a new scout now. Oh, by the way, if you just go a little bit northeast of the circus tent, you can see the obelisk. Oh, apparently I hadn't even been all the way here. Nilsson's Point. It is huge. Glyphs all over it. Oh, hello. Shot just a little bit too late. Trying to get close to use the blunderbuss. Oops, I didn't mean to send out the bat. Seize its cargo or pillage their stores for fuel and supplies. Um, not like I'm desperate for fuel and supplies, because I can resupply everywhere that I'm going and everywhere that I'm near. Let's seize its cargo. Gourd of Corster Nectar. Reclaimed. Attackities often carry natural resources. They have hewn, farm... Wait. Wait, what the fuck? This is a... Tackety... Scout? I... I thought that was a... Like a... a Sky Madden Marauder or something. I... Hmm. That explains why it sort of seemed like it was running away from me at first. Whoops. I didn't think it would come out so suddenly from something that I mined unless it was angry. So far, everything else that comes out like that has always been angry. Whether it's a bowl cantankery or you're looting some floating cargo and it's a sky maddened explorer or something. Whoops. Uh, well, that must have hurt my reputation. But, I mean, I'm sure I'm fine. I was, like, beloved before that. So I'm sure just killing one wouldn't do much. Whoops. At Cuddlescombe, reading the ledger, Captain Lau. The captain details various damages done to their engine and the causes. Hull, a grieved cantankery, backplate, bad launch, off port prosper. Uh, hmm, we've already seen this description. But we got a couple sky stories. Got a homestead here. Warm and welcoming. Do I want to reduce terror? I probably do. Oh, I have munitions for the first time. So one munition for bronze wood. Bronze wood's worth quite a bit. It's pretty expensive. 
but also Port Avon. Hmm. I was thinking maybe I should eat my fill to reduce my tear, and then I was thinking I'm going to Port Avon, so what's the point? But actually, the stuff I do at Port Avon seems to only slightly reduce my tear. So I'm actually going to eat my fill, because that does like 10% or something. Bread is mealy, but spiced with what tastes like cloves. Just got a port report at Port Avon. Let's go ahead and get cheap repairs at the engine yard. I think that'd be good. Save me a little bit of money. Up to full for only 25 sovereigns. Eight whole. It's really good. See if we can do a couple things to reduce my terror as well. Take a relaxing stroll. See what it does. 23%, 21%. That is terrible. Oh, visit the allotments. I've done that before. What did that do? Uncanny specimen. Ah, right. Offers you a handful of freshly dug, tapered, tiger-striped roots. Let's call them carrots. An uncanny specimen. Sit with the eel fishers. Ooh, down to 16. I don't think I actually did this one before. You watch as the fishers snag their wriggling prey, heave them into the rock, and put an end to their thrashing with eel mallets. The catches are infrequent, though, and aside from those occasional struggles, always swiftly ended by a meaty thwack, you can sit back, enjoy the starlight, and make conversation. Let's watch a cricket match. And we're down to 1%, yes. Okay. Oh, I can visit the allotments again? That would give me another uncanny specimen. Ah, I got, I got plenty, it's fine. Do they have any deals? Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and buy all the scouts that I can. They don't actually cost money, they cost things that are more important than money, I suppose, like searing enigmas. But at this point, I've got two searing enigmas, so I feel okay getting the intrepid cavi. I don't think I have a mirrors of 50 or more, which I need to use them, but I'll see after I get them. I might as well have them and then, you know, I can just use them whenever I want. Once I get the 50 mirrors, might as well bring them on board. Mr. Menagerie extends a long finger to prod the dozing guinea pig. Aww. Oh, says the cavi, rubbing sleep from its eyes with a front paw. I do beg your pardon. It sits upright to address you. Sir Lionel, at your service. I might understand your need of a valiant scout. If so, I am the very pig. Just point me in a direction and I will sally forth on my trusty bat. Mr. Menagerie seems somewhat relieved to pass Sir Lionel on and begins to gather up its things. So, so that's how it travels out in the skies. It rides on a bat. It's not just a cavy. They also have a, a steed. <laughs> um, oh no. They leave after you buy one. Okay, where did you head to? Your house of invention near the Ormswold. I have no idea where that is. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're a bit cryptic. Like, for this place, Port Avon, the note was something like... Uh, it mentioned something about apples, and that's how I knew it was this place. House of Invention. Huh. Okay, well, we're done here. Can I use the scout? Is the question. What are my stats? Definitely don't have 50 mirrors. With the 28 plus 13, I have 41. But the question is, do I need the 50 as just my base stat, or can it be the combined version of this, where this is the... This is my base stat, and this is from the officers, right? Either way, I can't use the cavi, but... Oh, right. Mascots are a thing. I forgot about that. And I still need a quartermaster. So it's not gonna let me... Yeah. Mirrors at 50 plus, and it's red. A valiant guinea pig knight keen to demonstrate his prowess. A devil for courgettes. Warning. You're currently not able to use this. Fair enough. Yeah, there was another... Um... Another scout there, a bat, a different type of bat than the diffident bat that required 25 mirrors, which I definitely could do. Yeah, I have that even as my base stat, not just my combined stat. So, 
Well, I guess whenever I find Mr. Menagerie again, I'll do that. In the meantime, I'm heading back to New Winchester, and then I'm going to stock up for going to Magdalene's. Just turning in some port reports, and I actually have enough favor with the Tacades to affect the balance of power in the Reach twice. Let's do that. And let's see how we're doing. Gained fortune with the Tacades, now 80, thriving. I'm now 110, reputation, beloved. I'm now loathed by the Windward Company. Let's do it again. Thriving, beloved, loathed. Okay, so that's not any different. I think I'm all set to go to Magdalene's. So Magdalene's is south, southwest of New Winchester. Yeah, so it should be somewhere down here. I filled up my hole with just three things, as many fuel and supplies as I can carry, along with having the three sacks of verdant seeds to complete this prospect that I've had absolutely forever, literally since about the beginning of the game. Yeah, four, four fuel, five supplies, that should be plenty to find it, I think. Something that's really sad that I just had to do is I was putting stuff away in the bank, and that's when I realized that my intrepid cavi takes up hold space if they're not in a scout slot, which means the only place I can store them is in the bank. I'd like to believe I didn't just shove my lovely little cavi into, like, a safety deposit box. No, I gave them their own room in the bank. Time to explore the unexplored. I've come through this way so many times, under this bridge at the Scamps Narrow, coming to and from New Winchester and Port Avon. It's time to finally go down this way. Ooh. That could be Magdalene's. Probably not, though. That's very firmly southwest. And it's supposed to be south-southwest. Ooh, that was close. Let's read the safe. Oh, Eleven sovereigns. That's never worth it. That's terrible. The Incognito Princess is delighted. Had a doll's house this size, much prettier, of course. I think we've seen that description before. Homestead. You sit down beside a cold, silent homestead. The windows are boarded, the door locked. But the foliage in the garden hasn't grown wild. Abandoned in a hurry. Let's search it. Found a crate of nostalgic crockery. Looks like there's a pathway that leads through there. Let's go ahead and reveal that. Nothing to report. I love that warm golden glow around here. 
So beautiful. Yeah, that's good. Let's go back to here and hope there's a pathway down here. Oh wait, hold on. I think we have a marauder. sack. A stoppered vial falls out of the sack after sufficient shaking. A collection of gathered disappointment that someone might be willing to pay for. Oh, a jumble of undistinguished souls. Oh. No room. Uh. How much are they worth compared to, like, crockery and stuff? I don't remember. They might not be worth it at all. I mean, they're definitely worth more than fuel, but considering that I'm exploring, so I kind of need my fuel and supplies... I think I'm actually just going to toss them. I don't think they're worth that much. Let's see what's past the homestead. Look at all those roots beneath us. Oh! We know Gain Sovereigns sucks. Let's explore the captain's cabin. Salon stewed gossip. Yeah, this should definitely be leading to Magdalene's. This is definitely south-southwest. must be it. We're super close to this, though. What is that? Oh, is that a mushroomy homestead? The Rat Brigade's noses twitch with greed. Is the homestead an easy target for food? Yeah, it's a fungusy homestead. Oh, that's really cool. I thought there was just one homestead, but no. Solitary Settler lives in this modest homestead. She's not much of a conversationalist, but the enticing smells that waft from her kitchen are convincing. Um, I mean, 17% tear is no problem, but it's always good to get that down. Let's eat our fill. 7%. A grim but filling gruel. I wonder if Magdalene's is going to be a mushroomy place. Oh, another freaking marauder. Let's see if I can blunderbuss it.
Captain's cabin. Salon stewed gossip. Finally, Magdalene's. A hot bath and decent conversation. The princess desires that you dock. What's making that noise? Sounds like a very loud clock. Some sort of clockwork mechanism. Oh, this place is gorgeous. Oh, look at all that stained glass. Maybe this is where I get stained glass. I remember I needed that for... something. Uh... Oh, I needed that for the... the weird object that I found after climbing the mountain at Lustrum. Remember Murgatroyd's shop? It's one of the things that I need along with, like, I think nectar and bronzewood or something. <laughs> 